ha llegado la hora de la recuperación económica y necesitamos... Y necesitamos... Jamaica and Venezuela have always had some kind of relationship spanning back centuries. Like any relationship between countries, it always have its ebbs and flows. Jamaica-Venezuela relationship reached its peak in the Petrocarib deal the South American nation struck with Jamaica, and several Caribbean and Central American countries in 2005. Petrocarib allowed Venezuela, which has one of the world's largest oil reserves, to sell oil on favorable terms. The only two exempt countries from the deal was Barbados and in Trinidad and Tobago, they both had their own access to energy resources. Petrocarib is an agreement between Venezuela and some Caribbean territories to purchase oil on preferential payment conditions. The agreement, which began in 2005, allows beneficiary nations to buy oil at market value, but only pay a percentage of the cost up front. The balance can be paid over 25 years at 1% interest. The relationship took on the nature of a barter trade mechanism, nations could purchase up to 185,000 barrels of oil per day, and settle some of the debt with goods and services. Jamaica created the Petrocarib Development Fund to manage the proceeds. The fund, which received about US $5 billion up to 2018, has been used for infrastructural development, including roads, ports and airports, social programs such as housing, education and sanitation, and the refinancing of government debt. In return for its generosity, Venezuela took 49% ownership in Jamaica's Petrogem refinery in 2008. Prior to Petrocarib, several failed and successful attempts were made for joint Jamaica-Venezuela cooperation. Javamex was an attempt by Jamaica in the 1970s, at the time the world's largest exporter of bauxite ore, the raw material for aluminum, to bypass or replace American and Canadian multinational companies Reynolds, Aluminum Company of America and Kaiser Aluminum, of the USA and Alcan of Canada. These corporations controlled the island's bauxite industry. It was conceived as a huge US $300 million alumina refining complex, to be jointly owned by Jamaica, Venezuela and Mexico, writes Wilberforce Reed. Jamaica would supply the bauxite for this plant, and Venezuela would supply oil. Venezuela leaders have visited Jamaica, Chavez among them. He came in 1999, and with a 135-member delegation in 2005, to sign the Petrocarib deal. Nicolas Maduro was on the island in September 2015, during the 10th anniversary of the Petrocarib Agreement, the 50th anniversary of bilateral relations between both nations, and the 200th anniversary of the famous Letter of Jamaica by Simon Bolivar. Bolivar was the great liberator of Latin America, having a hand in the founding of Venezuela and other Latin American countries, wresting them from Spain. He fled to Jamaica and was exiled on the island for almost a year. The relationship took a turn when the country was at a crossroads, and had to choose between aligning with Venezuela or the United States. When Trump came into power, and decided to stir things up in Venezuela, along with other South American countries, who were increasing falling under the influence of Russia, China and Iran. Like most of United States interventions, this was yet again another attempt of destabilizing Venezuela and plunder its resources. A power struggle concerning who is the legitimate president of Venezuela began on 10 January 2019, when the opposition majority National Assembly declared that incumbent Nicolas Maduro's 2018 re-election was invalid, that the office of the president of Venezuela was therefore vacant, and declared its president, Juan Guaido, to be acting president of the nation. As of May 2019, Guaido has been recognized as the interim president of Venezuela by 54 countries, including the United States and most nations of Latin America and Europe. Internationally, support has followed usual geopolitical lines. Russia, China, Iran, Syria, Turkey, and Cuba support Maduro, while the United States, Canada, and most of Europe and Latin America support Guaido as interim president. The process and results of the May 2018 Venezuelan presidential election were widely disputed. The National Assembly declared Maduro illegitimate on the day of his second inauguration, citing the 1999 Constitution of Venezuela enacted under Hugo Chavez, Maduro's predecessor, in response, the pro-Maduro Supreme Tribunal of Justice, 
said the National Assembly's declaration was unconstitutional. Minutes after Maduro took the oath as president of Venezuela on 10 January 2019, the Organization of American States OAS, approved a resolution in a special session of its permanent council declaring Maduro's presidency illegitimate and urging new elections. Special meetings of the OAS on 24 January and in the United Nations Security Council on 26 January were held, but no consensus was reached. Secretary General of the United Nations Antonio Guterres called for dialogue. Maduro's government states that the crisis is a coup d'etat led by the United States to topple him and control the country's oil reserves. Guaido denies the coup allegations, saying peaceful volunteers back his movement. Guaido announced on 16 March 2019 that he would embark on a tour of the country to organize committees for what he called Operation Freedom, with the goal to claim the presidential residence, Miraflor's Palace. From the first rally in Carabobo State, he said, we will be in each state of Venezuela, and for each state we have visited the responsibility will be yours, the leaders, the united, to organize ourselves in freedom commands. In an open assembly celebrating the anniversary of the 19 April 1810 date, when the Venezuelan independence movement began, Guaido offered the example that organized protests in Sudan, led to the replacement of Omar al-Bashir, and called for the greatest march in history on 1 May, to once and for all end this tragedy. Coinciding with his speech, Netblocks stated that state-run CANTV, again blocked access to social media in Venezuela. United States National Security Advisor John R. Bolton indicated in a press conference that Defense Minister Vladimir Padrino Lopez, Supreme Court President Michael Moreno, and the head of Maduro's presidential guard, Ivan Hernandez Dalla, had been talking with the opposition over the last three months about a peaceful transition and had agreed that Maduro needed to go. This uprising was bloodly and catastrophic. Venezuela became practically a failed state. Jamaica was not the only country to cut ties, practically most countries in the Caribbean and the Western region. The operation failed to achieve its objectives, which was to overthrow Nicolas Maduro and install Juan Guaido. Recently we have seen the United States easing tensions with Venezuela in order to kickstart a new oil trade. Due to the current war between Ukraine and Russia, this development is now in its early stages, and we just have to wait and see how it develops over time. There have been talks within the Jamaican parliament to restart talks with Venezuela and try to eke something out of a deal, but nothing concrete has been set in motion as yet.